Um, today we'll talk about um, structural, uh, sorry, single nucleotide uh, variant coding, and I will try to understand to tell you, to, to make you learn how to do that, uh, to understand what the main principle to when we use to when we do it, uh, how we can improve our data to, to get the better results. So it's be, it will be a, a kind of a reminder of what we've done uh, yesterday plus some add-on, and how to filter uh, the, the data. And at the end, a, a bit of um, SNP visualization in IGV. So before we start, I will do a, a shameless advertisement for what, uh, what we are doing, um, especially if you are Canadian. Uh, we have a strong partnership with Compute Canada. And if you are if you are Canadian or, or Canadian collaborators, uh, I, I really strongly encourage you to go to Compute Canada. It's a um, free set of uh, high-performance computing resources available uh, for any academic uh, researcher and and his personnel. So um, you see, there's a lot of there's more than two thousand uh, CPU core uh, available. A lot of lot of data. There's new. Um, there's one or two new um, HPC centers that have been opened this year, so it's uh, it's a really really um, um, a really big chance we have in Canada to have this uh, resource for free. Um, if you want to apply, you just need to go to the website. You apply, the PI apply, then uh, you choose one consortium you want to do to to be to, to work. One consortium it could be West Reed if you're on the West Coast. It HPC for us if you are in Ontario, it could be Mammoth or uh, um, uh, Calcul Quebec if you are in Quebec. And then you choose which uh, server you want to, to work on. So you will have to do, um, if you just register, you will have a, a standard location, which is like, I think it's two terabytes of data. And uh, I don't remember exactly how many uh, core years of usage you have. So you can go over what is the usage you ask for. But if you if you go over what you are, what you have as a default allocation, you will have lower priority on the on the on the system. If you want large allocation, you need to do every year kind of fill a grant, which is like a two or three page grant, and uh, which is an, the deadline is in November usually. And you ask, you require, you make you make your math. You say I have uh, this amount of uh, data uh, that will take me this um, this amount of uh, space, this amount of processing, and you ask for that. What is cool with that? We have a partnership with them, and um, at uh, C3G, um, we maintain a set of um, resources uh, for Compute Canada. So it's, uh, the idea was to develop a system, uh, partnership with um, a system which is called uh, CBMFS. It's a CERN virtual, virtual, pharma, file, virtual machine file system. With the idea is we maintain one location all the tools, all the genomic resources, all the pipeline for, for bioinformatics, and they are spread between the different clusters. Uh, so if you use one or the other cluster, you know that if you use for um, all tools, you know they have been compiled and installed exactly the same way than if you are working in another cluster. So we have a so, lot of tools, a lot of genomic resources, so 20, 14 space, different spaces, and we also provide our own pipeline, like the, what we are doing all today, you can do the same directly with automated way with, uh, or the NSEC uh, pipeline. So all of that is integrated to what a consortium we, we have called GenApp, uh, which um, it's a consortium to, uh, so to, to manage all this, thing, this kind of thing. So the CMFS, the pipeline, uh, but we also offer um, a private instance of uh, Galaxy. Uh, where you could have your data on the on the cluster. So actually, the Galaxy is only for uh, on uh, Calcul Quebec. So you could have your data on um, on the, the cluster, and you can run Galaxy directly. And it, the Galaxy job will run the job of uh, Galaxy, the process on the on the computer data cluster. So you won't have your data that will be on the um, University of Pennsylvania, I think, or I don't remember which the, the official Galaxy um, web server is. So it's a, a really uh, interesting system. You also have a data hub to share your, da your data or your track with your, with your colleagues. 
So I really encourage you, if you have, if you are Canadian or if you have Canadian um, colleagues, to apply to this kind of consortium. Okay, now let's talk about uh, SNV. Um, so people are are doing um, genome resequencing, uh, mainly to uh, map the genetic variation and the structural variation, so to, to find variants in individual. So this is the main purpose of doing this all this kind of analysis. And it is done mainly, mainly uh, to, for rare disease, but also in cancer, in agriculture, and all of this kind of, um, of project. And also to there's a large project like Southern Genome Project here um, that do it just to have a, a global picture of variation in the human population. <coughs> so to do that, this is the workflow we are, um, we are working on since yesterday. So yesterday we saw all the data processing, and today we will saw this second part. So if we can summarize this step, uh, quality control, when you receive the data, you do uh, really important to do quality control. Uh, then you pre-process your data to uh, obtain the highest uh, uh, quality of your data. You map your data. You uh, process your mapping to uh, improve your, uh, your, your alignment. And then you do the uh, small variant calling. So as I say, importance of quality control. Before you, uh, you start your analysis, you need to look at your data. Um, what is really important is when you do an experiment, uh, or if you want to compare your experiment, is to um, use the same protocol and the same instrument to, for the, all the different samples. Quite often, I've got uh, people that came and have done a project a few years ago, and they want to do another project, and they don't, want, they don't use the same um, protocol instrument. And for sure, we, have, we see artifact in one group of the others. So. That could be an issue. So that's why we have, we see, if we don't, if we are not normalizing everything, we will clearly see some technical issue. So it's really important to do that, especially for SNV, but if you want to compare like condition, case versus control. So what is a, a single nucleotide variant calling? <coughs> so it could be summarized by that. What we want to do is to find some position where we have the reference genomes, and we try to find a specific position where we observe another allele than what we have in the reference genome. It's as simple as that. Where it starts to be a little bit trickier is you want to find this type of position, but you don't want to detect this other type of position. So as you can see, and as I, I said a little bit yesterday, what is really important to do a good um, SNP calling is to have a good base quality to trust your uh, basis to try to reduce the amount of possible error you will see, and as you can see here, to have enough uh, coverage. If I have here, I think I have like 10 co 10, 10, ish, 10 ish, uh, coverage, so around 10, 10 weeks of coverage. It's clearly easy to see what is a SNP, what is not a SNP. Now you can imagine if I only take three weeks of coverage, so what is done in, in many samples in the southern genomes, they have three weeks of coverage, and clearly see, I cannot make the difference between my SNP and my, SNP and my errors. <coughs> so coverage, best quality, uh, really important. So best quality, we talked about yesterday. And so the idea of base quality is if you see these two types of um, region, where you see two, uh, two alleles, so two, two alleles with high quality and two alleles with low quality, you will, the color will turn to favor calling this variant instead of the other. So how it works? So it is a, a general workflow for doing a sleep calling. Uh, so the idea, you've got your uh, data from your sequencer, um, you do base calling, you get your fast queue, you do the read mapping uh, to map, you improve uh, your uh, mapping. And then you have two ways of doing your, the calling. 
multi sample coding and single sample coding. So uh, the two methods are a bit similar, but I really uh, encourage you to go with multi sample coding if you have multi, multi sample because you have an advantage. The principle of multi sample coding is to, at the beginning, to do the, the step, the, the work in two steps. The first step, you take the um, you take the, the 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 data of everybody, you merge everything together, just to find region where you could have candidate, uh, so candidate region for SNP. So if the more information you will have, the more depth you will create, the more variation you you you, you will be able to detect correctly uh, regarding to SNP uh, to SNP error because SNP error will be random between every sample. So you the idea if you have enough sample, accumulating the data of every sample. You, some variant will be with a given frequency in the population, so you will accumulate more evidence of, uh, of um, variant trees. So the idea of this first step is to so find this candidate uh, region, and for each candidate uh, region, to provide uh, um, uh, posterior probabilities for each sample. And then you do the uh, maximum likelihood estimate um, the resolution of the of the of each uh, for each sample to generate a genotype. When we do with um, single sample coding, the idea is to do uh, everything at the same time. So it's to find the, every site uh, and to find the genotype at, at the same time. So most of the methods will have an approach close to this one, which, is, which will be a Bayesian approach. But if you have, for some color, if you have enough coverage, if you have like, uh, I think it's more than a, than a thousand, um, hundred X of coverage, the, some color to, to be uh, fastest will just use a result approach, which means you, you can say, if I have more than, um, if I have between 20% and 80% of my of variant read, I would be um, uh, heterozygote. If I have more than 80%, I will be a mozygote variant, and if I have less than 20, I will be a mozygote reference. So really fast, really easy, but it only works if you have enough coverage. Um, some t-test approach are also done, but the t-test approach is more uh, used uh, not in a really single mode, but in a paired mode. When you have one sample and you are looking matched versus normal, um, so normal versus tumor, and you just do a t-test to see at, at this specific position, did I see more variant reads in my, um, statistically more variant reads in my tumors and in my normal. So the idea is to find uh, somatic variation. So just to give you a, a quick overview of, a, of uh, the Bayesian approach, I will not go in detail. I'm trying to reduce as much as I can every uh, kind of equation in, in my slide, because people then are, are scared or bored. So the idea is you just want to find the genotype knowing the data, so which means finding the genotype knowing each haplotype. And if we Go fast is is fine. The genotype based based on what you observe at each read and based on the base quality. That's why the base quality is really important when you do SNP coding. So it's just a, a summary and and um, accumulation and of probability. So I don't go in detail because every color has its own uh, method methodology and its own formula to do the variant coding. So uh, I could give you one, but if you use another one, it's it's uh, useless for you. So what are the strategies that we know we can know how we can uh, do the variant coding? What are the strategies to improve this variant coding? So <coughs> some of them we have uh, seen yesterday. Local realignment, duplicate marking, best recalibration, population structure. So just a reminder, local realignment. What we want to do is to avoid this kind of situation where you have some reads with an indel that are perfectly matched with the indel, and the other that don't have an indel that show to, cor to correct the position of indel, few mismatch in the region. So if you look, you will, if you don't do indel realignment, you will probably call an indel here, a variant here, and a variant here. If you do your indel realignment, all the read will have the indel, and all the fake variant will be, uh, will disappear. Duplicate marking, what is important to mark duplicates? Because if you have this read here, with a variant, imagine this variant comes from a second from a PCR error at the first cycle, and you have all these PCR duplicates. So you have around six copies out of eight that show the variant. 
So you can imagine the, um, your variant color would probably call a, call a, um, uh, a variant here, which will be a false positive. So if you mark all this uh, data as only one uh, allele, you will have only one, vari one uh, read variant out of three. And in that case, you, won't, you probably won't call the, the variant at this position. Base quality, as I say, base quality is really uh, important in terms of uh, in the in the Bayesian model. So it's really important to correct to don't have bias. Otherwise, you will see, especially in the in the sum. So you need to correct for the position of the of the, the position of the of the basis on the on the read and for the genomic context. Otherwise, you will see you will you will start to see some um, positional effect some um, context effect in your variant. So what I didn't talk yesterday is how we can improve using family or population structure and invitation. So it's a bit correlated to what I talk about a multi-sample coding. So the idea is to use haplotypes. For example, if you, have, if you know that in the population you have these two haplotypes, so the first one, AT, ATG, the second one, ACGA, and now you are sequencing. You have this base, you cannot trust it because you have bad quality. But based on this information, you could probably guess what the value of M. So what would be the value of M? Be careful, there's a, there's a I'm, I put a, a color code if pressed to. <laughs> it's not G, it's T. <laughs> As I say, multi-sample is really a good way to um, improve your variant coding. Uh, this is an old slide, so it is a tool that, have been, that are now decrypted. Uh, but it was, um, when you see it bigger, it was a multi, the first multi-sample, the multi-sample approach, the GTK, GTK uh, so bigger is for population coding, GTK multi-sampling when we do, it was a unified genotyper in a, a multi-sample mode and genotype uh, Unified genotyper in a single sample mode. So you can see that the, uh, the, 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 it's not a rock curve, but it's similar to a rock curve. Uh, it's quite better when you use multi sample approach. Another way to improve your data is to use trios. So if you have a family and you know this uh, family, this family structure, uh, you can uh, use it to uh, get more information. Because you expect in the child that each allele of the child come from one of the parents, so you have duplication of the data. So you can use it to um, to be um, to improve your call, and you can also use the Mendelian segregation of alleles. If you see a variant in the child, if you don't see the variant in the in the parent, it's probably uh, not a true variant. Probably because we know that there are the novel mutations that that arrive uh, in the only in the child. It's why you can also calculate the novel mutation rate. If you see that this, the novel mutation rate is really high, probably you have false positive in your, in your data. So when we do variant coding, we start from BAM file. And usually, doing variant coding um, is not really a, a big task. It's around 10 hours if you use uh, several um, color. And it will reduce a lot your data, so you will end up with around a gigabyte of um, data for your variant for uh, whole genome analysis. Now you've got your variant. What is interesting to do is to understand what the format of the variant and how we can filter and annotate the variant. So the format is a VCF format, so variant code format. Uh, it's, uh, it's based on the same principles as the BAM file. In terms of you've got a big header that gives you a lot of information, and then you've got your calls. So in the header, what is it? There's two monetary lines, the format of your data, so because the VCF format evolved over time. So it's important that the tool can know which format you are using. And the, in the name of the column you will use for your um, data. Now all this information are not monetary, but almost all every program uh, are uh, filling uh, this data. 
so what this uh, line correspond? They correspond to um, the command that have been used to generate your data, but also information because you will see you have your you have your uh, yeah. So you've got your format, your chromosome position, annotation, reference allele, alternative basis. Then you have the quality. If you have filter, try to filter your data, it will give you if you filter or not. And then you've got some information about the variants in general and the format of the genotype code. And these two are described in the header. For example, if I take DP, DP is the total depth of coverage at this position. So you've got all this information that I'm encoded there. If I go for the format, GT, GT is the genotype. Okay, the genotype usually is encoded like that, either with a, a pipe or a, a, a slash. Which is zero zero for uh, homozygote reference, zero one for heterozygote, and one one for heterozygote. You will say yes, but I see, but I see a, a one two or a two two. What does that mean? So it's sometimes in the genome you are you are multi-allelic uh, position. So he has two possibilities. You have the reference and you have the two alternate solution. So it will be zero one two. So you, if you have three or whatever. So that could be more. So we will have here it will be C, it will be GT for that variant at this position. So it's the same principle of zero one, but if you had multiple allel for each new allele, it's two, three, and so on. So now you have this data, you have generated this data, you know what you have in your data. What is good to do is to do filtering because uh, usually um, all the Raw variant code contain a lot of errors, um, so most of the most of the algorithm tend to do really more permissive in the in the in the variant calling. So there's two way to do to to do your uh, initial variant for filtering. Uh, so you can do it uh, manually using a GTK variant fil uh, uh, filtration or SNPSIF, and it's what we will do today. Because we would we won't be able to do the second approach, which is better, but uh, to do that we need more uh, sample. So the first method is to do so variant filtering manually. So usually you know which parameters you want to do the filtering. You know which parameter influ could influence your uh, false positive and false negative uh, rate. So you know these parameters, and you apply and you say I want, like for example. I want to remove all every variant that have a depth of coverage uh, lower than 10, because I'm not trusting with the depth of coverage. So you will use the DP field and say, OK, filter, filter me everything. So this is done by variant filtering, but you, it's really efficient. But it's difficult, because it requires you to know exactly what are the, the methods to do the variant calling and what are the par parameters you, you, need, you need to play on. Now, if you have a large cohort, I really recommend you to go with the second approach, which is a variant recalibration, which is uh, similar to the base recalibration. So the idea is to um, is to uh, really um, to really learn with a set of known variants what are the good parameters to call variant, and then to apply that to the other. But I think I have, yeah, a call. So you can also use for annotation. App map and DBSNP to annotate your data and to look for false negative and false positive. And I say variant recalibration here. The idea of the variant recalibration, which is uh, really uh, interesting and really efficient. So you you have your data, you have a set of variants. So you take a training set. So it's a machine learning approach. So you take your, your, your training set, and in this uh, training set of data, you have to select from your from your from your uh, Set of from your set of code, um, you look in uh, in this training set which are which one are found in the really uh, known database like DBSNP, POMNI, all these variants that are really known and confirmed, and which one are not, and which one seems to be false. From that, you generate a, a mathematical models of what in your data leads to a good variant calling. So you got this model. You generate this model. When you have this model, you apply this model to all your variants in your data. 
And then you need to choose a parameter here. For example, it could be 99% where you want, okay, if I apply this rule on all my data, I want that uh, all the all my variants that found in AppMap, all the variants I've got in my in my call in my calls that are called as good variant uh, and are found in, app, in AppMap, are found in 99% of, uh, of the case. So it's just a way to turn up and turn your 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 final uh, method, and it's and it works really well to uh, improve your your variant. But as I need, you need at least to have. I will say there's no uh, magic number, but I think under 10 to 15 uh, uh, sample, it's hard. Sometimes it would crash, so it's why you need a, a big amount of, of uh, variant to do that. So when you have done this uh, variant cleaning, what is good to do is to annotate your data. Uh, so one of the annotations we use, it's to look for uh, mappability. So we know that uh, the reason all the genome is not uh, mappable at the same uh, rate. So some regions are harder to map, some not, especially due to the um, repeated region or due to the GC content. So that could impact. So if you know that you are in a, in a region where it's uh, hyper mutated or you expect to have more, um, more read to map because it's kind of a, um, all the a repeated region, all the copy maps there, you expect to have more variants and more fluidity variants. So it's a good annotation to have. Um, annotate your variant with non variant to know if you already is already a common variant or not. Find uh, the impact of your variant. So either find the variant effect or the functional uh, annotation of the variant. And if you are working in cancer, to annotate with. Um, the cosmic databases, which is the database of, uh, of variants implicated in cancer. Today, we will annotate the variant uh, with uh, DBSNP, and uh, we will annotate the, 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 the impact of the variant uses, using SNPF. So, so there's also a tool you can do that, that we'll do with uh, SNPF. And the idea is you use the reference genomes, you use the, um, the, the data set of um, transcript, and how this variant, where this variant is located in the transcript, and what the, modif when the, what the variant does, so which amino acid change it could impact, and which function it could impact. So it, it will tell you if your variant is coding, non-coding, and what has the impact, so high, moderate, low, or modifier. So it's a really good, a good way to filter your data if you are looking for, uh, for a specific disease or a specific variant picking in disease or in cancer. And usually we look first at the high and then at moderate because low and modifier usually you have variant but it's like no no impact on your protein. So yeah, don't have yeah, it's really unlikely that this kind of variant will have an impact on your uh, proteins. So as I tell you, when we do the processing, uh, it takes approximately ten hours to generate the variant generating the filtered and annotated variants. JTK SNPF is really efficient, but what is really important is you looking at the variant, understanding the biology behind the variant, and that have no values in terms of time and, uh, and cost. So, a small add-on. Um, VCF uh, visualization. So, you can load your VCF in IGV. And we will do it today. So you have your read, and you can load VCF. And so you have a general, when you do the VCF, a general um, visualization of the variants. So the first bar is um, the proportion of sample that has the, var the variant. And then usually, then usually you have the detail for each uh, sample. So you can then look at your actual data. To finish, to slide two or three. Metrics, 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 metrics. Um, so this is the classical metrics for uh, DNA So still, when you do variant calling, you you need to look at your uh, stat to be able to choose the correct um, filter you want to apply to your variant. And also, you can look at uh, some specific stats. If we run uh, SNPF, it provides us a really um, good 
set of, uh, of stats uh, you can use to look where your variants are located, uh, what type of variant, what type of modification, what type of uh, transition, translation. So this, this kind of, of metrics you can use to uh, see if your uh, what you see is close to what you expect. So that's it. Now we can uh, do the variant calling. Any question? Yeah. Um, in, uh, so, could you, I'm not sure to understand, if the, if the snip is in exam or in projection? So yeah, in exam, the snippet will just find the, uh, find the, what is the impact on the project on the transcript, but the change will, will uh, impact the transcript, and will predict the, the impact if the, if the variance will change the, or not the, the, the project amino acid. What if it doesn't, it's not on the amino acid? Yeah, so if it's on the intron or intergenic region. So on intron, it will try to assess if it's a splice, uh, if, it's, if it's a splice variant. So SNPF will do that. If not, if it's in intergenic, it will, it will put as intergenic or intronic and will, uh, it will class as a low or a, a low or moderate impact. So what you can do, there's not really uh, many tools for this variant, but what you can do is to look at, um, um, for example, DNAs to find our chipsec, to find if there's a possible transcription factor in, that could over, overlap the position of your variant, but there's no um, tool dedicated for that. So that's the main problem with that kind of, um, of variant. Thank you.